All right, you guys ready? I hope, I hope it's exciting. Whoa. I've never done an unboxing before, let alone a pallet. Three, two, one. Woo. This is nice. Whoa. Wow. This is, this one's ridiculous. It has a big fur coat in it. Wow. What's up guys, welcome to Data Refinement. Today I want to talk about the fact that I bought a $5,000 pallet and I sold it in 45 minutes and now all the dust has settled. I'm literally disposing of the pallet and the cardboard or recycling it rather. We're gonna go over the profitability and all the things that took place in that 45 minutes and whether or not I would recommend buying a pallet to sell yourself. All right, so this is where we unbox the pallet right here. It was 750 new with tags Nordstrom pulls. So all the items were supposed to be brand new, but there were some issues with some of the items and it was supposed to be 10 to 20% kids stuff. It ended up being 30% worth of kids stuff and it wasn't supposed to have any of Nordstrom's house brands, but it ended up having 90% Nordstrom house brand. So the, the pallet was a little bit not as advertised. House brand? It's probably a house brand, Brittany Cools, but it's not a good brand. It's a house brand. For a pallet of this cost, I would have rather it had been around $3,000, but it ended up costing 5,000. So I'm gonna be asking for a partial refund on the pallet because it really wasn't what it was advertised as. So as an example, I was expecting new items. So this is a uh, Theory uh, dress shirt and the MSRP is $175. Now this is something that I would expect in the return pallet, not all of them as good as this, but I would include this in something. But this shirt actually has a really big stain on it. And this is made out of linen. And this is a looks like a dark ink stain. And I'm not sure that this is something that can be easily removed. So I'm actually not going to resell this even at like a dollar or two, because I feel like the actual resale value and return risk is too high. So I wouldn't resell this item. I'd probably just either put it in another lot to sell to somebody else, or I might even discard this or re-donate it. Some people say don't donate stuff like this because it just adds more to the garbage problem the United States has, but it's up to you. You let me know in the comment section below, would you list this for really low? On average, I paid $7 an item, so this would have been uh, a loss if I decided to do this. So these boxes had 150 items that were either kids or too low to resell. So I'm going to be asking for a partial refund and send these back to the company. I had to make up with it, make up for it with 150 other items for the buyers that ended up buying in the auction because I want to be fair to my customers. Luckily, we have a lot of stuff. So they paid $250 for 25 items. So I wanted to make sure that they got items that were worth it. So inside of these, I made sure to include one Patagonia piece and at least one new with tag other item. And so just trying to be fair because when people are paying $10 in a mystery pull, they're looking for something cool and they don't want to lose money. So as long as they make about $10 paying $10, it's okay. Do I recommend sourcing this way? Absolutely not. You guys know my main store, we buy items from the flea market. We buy items that we pay between one and $4 for, and there's a lot more margin to go over. This has stains, this has tears, this has flaws. So when you have a little bit more room, you can pass on that discount to the customer. And yes, on a normal shirt, somebody might be okay with a stain and get the item for a couple bucks, but on a pure white dress shirt, probably not. So that's something that you have to be able to judge the pros and cons. Don't just listen to something on YouTube and think, okay, that's gonna be profitable. I'm gonna buy every single theory. You wouldn't buy theory with a giant ink stain on it, right? And you wouldn't buy theory that is dress pants because People aren't wearing dress pants as much right now because they're not going into the office as much. And on Zoom, you don't need to wear pants. So it's really important to understand not every brand sells, not every brand sells well. And if you are gonna be in the business of moving volume, you need a way to make it up to customers in case something goes wrong. So bulk buying is not for beginners. I was able to process the entire pallet in just one day. For a normal person, this is gonna sit in your garage for weeks or months without getting listed. And so it's important to understand buying bulk is like the most advanced form of reselling. And I don't even recommend it because even in my volume, I found it pretty difficult to break that down and process it in one day. So I recommend you stick to buying items one at a time. It's really a lot safer way to grow your reselling business. Okay, so there's a few interesting things that happened during the auction. First off, at the top of the pallet were sort of all the best items. So I don't know if that's because they put in all the mediocre items first and at the very end, they sprinkle on top the best items for the lot. So people are maybe 
um, as they're listing the pallet on their own. Maybe they list the first 20 items and it goes well so far, Then, so then they don't really complain about the rest of the lot. Um, I don't know if you're experienced with buying pallets, but that's just what happened with this one. Towards the end, there were some okay items towards the bottom of the box, so it definitely seemed like it was sorted like this layer average, this layer kids, this layer above average. This lot was supposed to be no Nordstrom house brands, but it was over 90% Nordstrom house brands. So let me know in the comment section below how you guys deal when you buy pallets when it doesn't really match up to what it's advertised as. Um, and then also, obviously when you buy pallets, you need a way to discard the items that are not as good. Um, so I have about 150 items I need to figure out another home for. I think I'm just gonna auction them off really cheap. That's how I'm gonna handle them. Um, but I want to know how you guys, when you're buying bulk, how do you deal with the different types of inventory? And then how does your communication work with the owner? I personally texted the person that runs this company. He reached back to me. So I'm not going to do a review of this company until I get um, sort of the full picture, which is how do they deal with customers who are unhappy with the final product. So I also had plenty of other items in stock to fill these orders. And I wanted to make sure I was fair to all the people who bought something to let them know like, okay, we didn't have your particular order, but we have this as a replacement, uh, or you can have a refund. It's always best to let people know that they have an option when it comes to customer service. And I also have this question for you guys. I do have an online presence. I do have a YouTube channel. So was this lot better than average just because I'm an influencer? I did not tell them I was gonna do an unboxing. I did not get the box for free. I paid full price for it, which is $5,000. And so I was expecting to be able to sell it one by one for 25,000. Um, gross on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. After everything ends on the 25,000, I was expecting to get back 10, which is doubling my money from 5,000 to 10,000. Since I decided to do this on whatnot, I essentially wanted to get a $1,000 profit selling it all in one day, which ended up happening. I was able to profit a little over $1,000 on this after paying staff electricity, shipping, storage. It took three trips to the post office to bring everything there. And then I also had to pay a little bit of a premium on the items that I put in the boxes to make it right. So overall, I made about $1,000 on a $5,000 investment and it took a, about a day and a half. So some people in the chat were saying, there's no way in hell they would do that much work for only $1,000 profit. But for me personally, I think that earning $1,000 profit in one day puts you in the top 1% of income earners if you did that every single day. And you could essentially build a small team and sell one pallet a day if you wanted to do that. And I think that there are definitely things I would do for less money than talk about clothing online. It was actually relatively easy. It was a lot of work and a lot of talking, but it's not digging ditches. It's not talking to customers in person, which is much more tiring. Personally, I, I consider it a win. I don't know if I would have buy it again. I would have liked this type of pallet to only cost about 3000 for it to be worth it. And if it was going to include this type of stuff, I would have wanted it to be around $3,000. Um, but at 5k, if the items were all a little bit higher, a little bit of a higher tier, I would have been okay with that as well. So we also hit a Nordstrom rack sale and the items were significantly better and around the same price. So it's interesting looking at when you damage out all the goods that can't be sold, that increases your per unit cost. So if I damage out everything, the items ended up costing like $9. So that's not enough room for to make this work because I paid I paid seven. So there's basically two dollars worth of damage built into every single item. So for you guys, when you're buying bulk, determine that buffer zone for you. So luckily I did not lose money. And I think that somebody who resold this wouldn't lose money either. It's just they wouldn't have made the expected profit they were looking for. So I appreciate you guys. If you need more help, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash a resource podcast. In there, we have 10 live coaches to help you get to the next level. And we appreciate you guys. Until next time, make progress daily.